we're going to do something a little bit more interesting um, that I found a little bit harder to figure out on my own, but it also demonstrates some other concepts that we want to do, and that's mapping. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is load some libraries, and this is because we're going to do some things that are uh, in need of some extension. Namely, we're going to be doing mapping. We would like to have mapping libraries so we don't have to hand code everything. So these are labeled uh, on, I believe it's listed as page 28, but it's 3.2 in the notes, but I will type them out. You can also go through and point and click these. So map tools. Maps, map data, ggmap, lattice, oh, where that came up. And finally, raster. This is a pretty common set of libraries to add for things like mapping. You can see a lot of them are called something that has to do with maps, such as map tools, maps, map data, and ggmap. I'm not entirely sure what Lattice does. Um, I'm sure we can figure it out, but it is loaded by default in a lot of cases if you load raster. So I just load it ahead of time to make sure that we don't have errors. And then raster is using a graphics package. And I'm gonna give you guys just a second to continue getting those loaded and make sure everybody's doing well. Uh, online and at IEB. Oh, uh, one note, if you did have seek in R, there's sometimes a little bit of conflict with libraries and you may have to unload that first. If they have similarly named uh, functions, they will conflict and it'll tell you that. Which, if you see that, it's a good idea to remove any libraries that you're not using and reload the ones that you are using because that conflict may lead to erratic behavior that's extremely difficult to troubleshoot. So like, this is the function I've always used, but it's actually reading to a different package. Does that make sense? Uh, you oh, you can just unclick them. Oh, just unclick Yep. So if I want to, uh, let's do raster. Raster is easy to find. I can unclick it and it'll say detach. You could also type that if you wanted to. I never remember that line of code, and I usually have to look it up. Uh, but to detach things, you just click on and off. It is nice enough to do that to you. So if you can't get something, you can always click it on and off, grab the, the code, and write it in the correct library. Cool. OK, so let's start by making a map, because let's at least get something visually pretty in our lives rather than just text. So the first thing we have to do is grab data. Uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about today, in addition to doing mapping, is where to find data. One of the things that's built into here, in, into R, is pre-made data for you. Things that should exist, like map data, doesn't really change that much. You need, you know, global uh, administrative boundaries. Those are things that are set and everybody uses, so there should be a package. So there should be a way to get those things. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, this is also where a lot of those packages that you load for that have vignettes will load their data. So you'll be able to find data based on what you have loaded and actually do some tests with it. Cheerfully, this function is called data. It's very, very easy. Um, and it'll give you some information here. Usually, this is all you need. And if you type it in slowly and start typing in world, you'll start seeing that it lists this data for you. And it actually gives you a description for it. So you can actually kind of search through here and find what might be useful for you. This is a very, very deep amount of data that's pre-built in or that has it easily pulled from the internet. So this is useful to know, but for now we're just gonna use world simple. And I will also uh, highlight the fact that this is not um, just graphing data. This is all kinds of data. Okay. And when I load that, I see that it gave me a, a name called World Simple. It automatically names it what it thinks it should be named. And it gives me that it's a data type. It is a spatial polygons data frame. So this is a special uh, augmented version of a data frame, which will help us understand how to use it. 
and there's 246 elements. There's only 195 countries, but there are a bunch of islands and they need special individual parts. So that's why it has different elements. And I don't actually know what the rest of this says. Oh, the size. It's kind of hard when my screen's all built up. And then we can just plot it. And you can Plot's very, very powerful because it does automatically interpret a lot of things. There are actually in the background a couple hundred different versions of plot running, and it tries to intuit which kind of data type you have. In this case, when you load the raster library and the maps library, it says, oh, this type of data, this spatial polygons data frame, when we plot it, we want it to look like this. So it's built in for you to automatically do, so you don't actually have to you know, hard code this yourself. You can make this bigger by expanding this window, and it will automatically adjust. So you can see it. Um, I'm going to shrink it down again so you guys can actually see what I'm typing. But when I'm doing it, it's a little easier to have a bigger map. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Now, everything in maps uh, tends to be in left and long, right? That's how we've always learned it. You know, flat first, long. Well, in R, everything is X and Y, even these graphs, which means your latitude is second. So that's one of the most confusing things when you start doing this is longitude has to come first and latitude. So if we wanted to zoom in on this and just pull one section of the map, we could use the same plot functions that we've already learned, epsilon and y loop, to define our uh, area. So the area that I'm going to grab is going to be the United States. And I'm going to define epsilon as negative 130, which is equivalent to uh, 130 west longitude through negative 60, which is the equivalent of 60 west. And I'm going to do the same thing for y. And I'm going to do 25 to 53, which is the equivalent of uh, 25 north to 53 north. That didn't do anything other than define our two vectors. And now if we want to plot it, we can do plot, give it what we want to plot. <clears throat> and x limb equals x limb, no quotes, y limb equals y limb. There's no quotes here because these are variable names. So when it sees this without quotations in it, it's gonna go, oh, it's a variable, and read what we stored in that variable. And then we get our lovely United States. Now, why did I do this in three states? It is totally valid to do epsilon equals C, negative 130, negative 60, et cetera. Uh, but I have found that defining these things ahead of time makes my life easier because if I was off by a latitude or I actually kind of wanted a little bit more of Canada or a little less Canada in this picture, I can easily adjust that by just changing this and rerunning this. It's also a little bit more easily readable rather than trying to parse a bunch of parentheses. If you have to do things in multiple steps, do it. So what you basically did, and this would be a good way to do this if you were just writing your own code, is define everything beforehand so then you can reuse it multiple times. Yeah, so the question was, uh, is this a good way to do it where you can set things and then you can reuse it multiple times? And the answer is yes. Anything that you think you're going to use multiple times. So if we were going to say, try a, different, a bunch of different um, uh, uh, packages, and we always want to grab these that long, it's going to be easier for you to just use that rather than having to remember where they are. You can just store them as variables. Making sure there's nothing. Okay. Uh, two, two. We can also, again, just to drive home this point, because this is of the plot family, we can use all of the same things we used before. So we can use call to make this I'll drag three, just to match the notes. I'm going to call the main United States and neighbors. And then I'm going to throw one that's not 
marked in the documentation. But the name should maybe give you a hint as to what it does. What do you guys think BG does? Background. It is the background. And this is just to make our map look prettier. 